Onondaga. It means people of the mountain. It's also an incredible place in Missouri. We are going to show you its amazing beauty while camping and exploring this secret gem. You just might want to add this to your list of must-see places to visit. After leaving the cabin in the Ozarks that we stayed at for a few days while we were sick and hiding from the sub 20 degree temps, we picked up some groceries, did some laundry, and purchased two electric blankets. We were planning on staying warm for the rest of this journey. I love setting up camp. It really is a lot of fun, especially with an awning and two tents that open and close so easily. And now that we are all feeling a lot better, we wanted to celebrate with a special dinner, something that we've been wanting to cook for several months. Welcome to Sar Trail. We are still in Missouri. It's still chilly. Cold. It's cold. <laughs> but we're better prepared for the cold now. We're not perfectly prepared, but we're better prepared for the cold. We're at a state park in Missouri. It's really gorgeous. It's Onondaga. Onondaga? Onondaga? Uh, Onondaga. Yeah. Onondaga. <laughs> O-N-O-N-D-A-G-A, right? Yeah. O-N-O-N-D-A-G-A. -A. Our first time here it's super beautiful. We got here in daylight. Uh, we're going to see more of this place tomorrow. There's some hikes to do. There's a cave to explore. So we got a lot of stuff we want to check out. But now it's time to make some pizza. You guys saw us use before the Ice Co. stainless steel camp grill slash oven. Well, tonight we're going to test its oven capability with pizza. Can it do it? Yes. You're confident? It made biscuits. It made biscuits, so it should make pizza. I but think so, yeah. we're making pizza tonight. We've been talking about making pizza for days. Yes. We were sick. I got sick for a couple days, and Natalie got sick for a couple days. We hunkered down in a cabin to stay warm, but now we're back out where we belong. <coughs> Sorry. And that grill owes us some pizza. Let's get going. Okay. So we're trying to stay as warm as we can. We got the grill on over here. We got the lava box down here by Bailey, who's playing with uh, a whole mess of Legos right now. And then we have the flicker fire, which I gave, Bailey and I gave Natalie over in Moab. And so we got all these things generating heat. Plus if that droning, moaning noise you hear in the background, that's our hot water heater kicking on, making hot water for us. So we're doing everything we can to make sure we're staying warm. We forgot our pizza peel, so to kind of make up for that a little bit, we're going to take that that's already been put out in the crust form 
and we're gonna put it on the grill just to broil it up, get it a little bit crisp, and then later we will put the tomato sauce and the cheese, and I think we're gonna do mushrooms, and then it's gonna go down in the oven. Do you wanna stay warm? That's where you stand. Oh, whoa, why is it doing that? <laughs> So while we have the first pizza on, well, not on the grill, in the oven of the grill, Natalie's gonna make her pizza in these egg life, kind of like tortilla things. They're made out of egg. She's not doing any kind of grains or anything like that, no carbs. So that's gonna be uh, a first for us. We'd use those for like tortilla shells and breakfast tacos and different things like that. This would be the first making pizza on them. So, but Natalie likes them. I think they're, like a very bendable styrofoam, oh. but they don't taste bad. They actually taste pretty cool. Let me slide it a okay. little bit this way too. Now that pizza looks good. Look at that. That's not good. All right, it's really cold, so we're gonna hang here by the lava box. We're not gonna worry about setting the table or nothing, but we're just gonna eat it like it is as it comes off. It comes off the grill, out of the oven. How is it? Amazing. Is it really that good? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, baby. Isn't it good? It's really, really good. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna get the other one. Here, mm -hmm. check it out. Look at that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that good? So that's our first of two pizzas we're gonna make like this. And then Natalie's making her, kind of like a pizza wrap I think it's gonna be tonight. <laughs> How's yours looking, babe? Uh, you know. <laughs> I think it'll be a good, it'll be fine. Let's see. All right, there's your egg life. Tortilla pizza, kind of pizza, not necessarily pizza wrap. It looks good. It looks <coughs> really small. I hope you're not very hungry. I'm making another one. Oh, ah, okay. So one thing, this whole peeled tomato, whatever, this is not really what's in here. This is tomato sauce or pizza sauce that Natalie made up a couple days ago for us. Mm -hmm. Four or five days ago. Tomatoes from our garden? No, no it's the whole tomatoes from there whole tomatoes plus since she mixed up all the seasoning and made the tomato sauce and it's been sitting there marinating for five days something That's like really that good. <laughs> it's really good it's got a lot of garlic in it mm -hmm. how's that mm, we're good you're missing out that's right well done. good morning we had a really good night's sleep the heating blankets game Changer, no question. We we stayed really, really warm. Bailey stayed warm. It was great. Now we just got to solve our insulation things, and then we'll have to get some 12 volt heating blankets because those were 120s that we put in at the Walmart we went to. We weren't able to buy any 12 volt, which is fine. We knew we were going to be near a power source, so it worked out great. But it gives us an indication now. This is kind of like a test to see does a heating pl blanket make a difference? and it makes an enormous difference. Heated up the whole inside of the tent. So I think with the iCamper tent getting a better insulator made, and then the Bush Company tent getting an insulator made, period, 
it's a dual canvas tent but it has no real winter insulation they don't sell that product at bush company so we're going to get one made that way no matter what the temperature gets to with the heating blanket going off of our battery bank and the insulated tents that we're just seriously good to go but that was the best night's sleep we have had in what 10 12 days natalie yeah, way better. Even better sleep than the cabin, because honestly, the, the bed in the cabin was a little bit rough on the shoulders. But the mat, yeah, the mattress that we have, and I need to show it to you guys what we've done in the eye camper. It's an eye camper air mattress that we have, plus with an organic one inch, like a memory foam uh, topper across the top of it. So between the air mattress and that one inch topper, and I run the air mattress at about 75% full, so it still gives you that cradle. If you're a side sleeper, it really cradles you in without having your, your shoulder or hips or anything like that on the hard part of the tent. It's just right, just the perfect amount. For me, that was a good amount. Natalie, the pressure for you? Uh, it was good, it was fine. I like it firmer, but you know, I definitely slept fine. Okay. Well, good. It was better for me, and hopefully if it was good enough for you, then we'll try that for another night and see how it goes. Makes a big difference. Got to check with Bailey, too, because I put hers at 75% full instead of just... Because before, I'd been cramming all the air possible in there that I could. For me, it was just too firm. On the hard shell of the tent. So. Yeah, right. Uh, Natalie was saying, if you didn't hear, we weren't sleeping on the hard shell, the bottom surface of the tent, so in all, it came out really good. No, I said Bailey. Too. Bailey? Bailey could, I was this is video. really, really bad video. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> start over. I'll just be quiet. I was just saying she could sleep anywhere, so whatever you did is fine. Good morning, Bailey. Good morning. <laughs> it isn't hard to see Missouri's beauty as you travel through this state. But if you don't stop and dig a little deeper, you just might miss out on her hidden beauty. Beneath the mountains, trees, and rivers are more than 5,500 caves. I have had a fascination with caves since I was a child. And thankfully, Bailey and Natalie love exploring caves as well. It's a different world with its own uniqueness. Right now, above the surface, the fall color is just rolling in. And after breakfast, we will show you what's hiding underneath our feet. I need you like a rising sun Let the light pour in and the colors run Like midnight skies need northern stars I think home is right So we're exploring around on a, wait. Onondaga. On Onondaga. On Onondaga State Park. And we're gonna take a tour of the cave here in just, we got about an hour and a half. So we're gonna look around on this trail. But this lake you see over here is naturally fed from the cave. It just flows out of that cave at 65 degrees, 24-7, 365. Fireflies and fields of gold. I'll be holding you till time grows old. So right behind me is where all of this water flows from, right out of the cave. So underneath all of this rock right here, there's that opening and you can just see crystal clear water flowing out. All right, so right from the mouth of where the water comes out, right over here is the original entrance that people used to go in and out of. So come on, check it out. So just like the water, there's a constant flow of cool water coming out. Well, right here, depending on which way the wind blows, there's a, there's a flow of cool air that comes out of this old mouth to the cave. Pretty cool, they've got this one all closed off, so you go around to the guided tour area 
to get inside the cave, which we're going to do here in just a little bit. Flickering sparks of a wide-eyed child Onondaga consists of just over 1,300 acres and has a constant year-round temperature of 57 degrees. It was declared a state park in 1982. The cave was discovered in 1886 when local resident Charles Christopher was looking for the source of the Miramic River as it flowed from the spring. Behind the spring, he found this beautiful cave. In its early days, the cave was mined for cave onyx. From 1899 to 1953, the cave and its surrounding land changed ownership many times. During this time, there were disputes over various rights, property boundaries, partnership quarrels, and such. It wasn't until 1953, when Lester Dill and Lehman Riley purchased the cave, that it had any real unified direction and purpose. In the 70s, there was one last ownership dispute when the U.S. Congress approved the building of a dam on the Merrimack River. This became a heated debate until Ronald Reagan signed the deauthorization of that bill in December of 1981. The dam would have flooded farmland and would have put this cave almost completely underwater. In 1982, a year and a half after his death, Lester Dill got his wish, and the cave was designated as a National Natural Landmark. Early visitors to Onondaga floated through the cave on boat tours, and at one time, weddings were performed at the Queen's Chapel, one of the most beautiful spots in the cave. Today, weddings can be held in the big room of Onondaga. Thankfully, one man's vision and passion saved Onondaga from being destroyed by mining and other commercializations. Onondaga State Park, let's talk just about the cave first. What did you think? I was shocked. <laughs> I was very surprised at what an amazing cave it is. It's not just a little tiny, you know, you go into this one area and that was it. It was a really big cave. Big and it's really gorgeous. Yeah, it really is. About this same time of year, what's it, three, four years ago, we went to, we were in Kentucky, and we went to Mammoth Cave, which is a national park, right? It is, yeah. A national park. And Mammoth Cave, it gets a lot of attention because it is a national park, mm -hmm. and it's enormous. I mean, no question, it is Mammoth. But it's not nearly as beautiful as this. This is just a little lowly state park, but it's amazing. Natalie was just looking for a place for us to go to, some place, like, I, I kind of come up, I'm the idea guy. And I came up with, hey, take us someplace that we can, like, not, not sightsee necessarily, but someplace cool that we can see that we haven't seen before. Let's not just go camp somewhere. Let's do something cool outside of just camping somewhere, which means in Missouri, we're in a state park, which is okay. It's not dispersed, but it's pretty cool. We're making, we're making good with it. <clears throat> so Bailey, what what did you think first off compare Onondaga Onondaga <laughs> cave to Mammoth cave uh, I think Onondaga is 
much prettier than Mammoth. Yep. And Mammoth is much bigger than Onion Dragon. It is. I think you just go deeper. I mean, the cave system in Mammoth is huge, but... Yeah, it's just a huge, it's a massive network. But this mm -hmm. one, we, we dropped down 185 feet mm -hmm. below the surface, which was cool. I didn't think that was going to be nearly that deep here, mm -hmm. which was really awesome. And what amazed me at this one, and I think you commented too, Bailey, is that everywhere we went, there was water. Yes. Where in Mammoth Cave, hardly any water. Just, I think there's one long waterfall with a pool and then a couple other areas. But this one, you were pre hard pressed to find an area that didn't have water and pools and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm cleaning this grill off. What am I cleaning it off for, baby? Steaks. Steaks tonight. All right, so I am gonna fry some beef bacon to go in some onions and garlic and green beans to go along with our steaks tonight. All right, so I'm gonna chop some garlic, a little bit of extra flavor also. So you guys have seen us for years and years cook on our Timbo Tusk Scottle. But we're gonna branch away from that for a little bit now because, how are you liking this? I like it. I like it a lot. It's good. You don't have 360 degrees to gather around, yeah. but we've just been carrying way too much cooking stuff with us. We have been. I'm going to start with sauteing these onions and the garlic. Alright, so I'm going to throw these green beans in with the onions and garlic. Let all that cook together. All right, I'm gonna chop up this bacon and put it back on top of the green beans. So, dinner is phenomenal. Natalie, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. mm. Try the beans, I think they came out really good. Everything. Really, really good. I like the beef bacon savored beans. Really good. Join us next Sunday morning as we celebrate our anniversary high up in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. <laughs>